Hey, Ben, would you like an introduction or would you like to introduce yourself? No, introduce yourself. All right. We'll let the experts handle this. Here you go. Thank you very much. I uh, would like to thank you for attending this talk. I would also like to thank the guys from the IoT Village for uh, helping us to publish uh, this uh, research to the, uh, to the media, to, uh, on Twitter, and on Motherboard. Thank you so much. Um, let me first introduce myself, and then we we'll discuss about what I'm here to present. So I'm Ben. I'm a PhD student from uh, Ben Gurion University. I study the area of uh, cybersecurity and IoT devices for the last uh, two and a half years. I'm a former Google employee. Uh, this research was also done using the help of uh, Moshe Sro, Dr. Asaf Shabtai, and Professor Yuval Alovici from uh, Ben Gurion University. And we also want to thank Fujitsu for funding, uh, Fujitsu System Integration Laboratories for funding this research. Okay, so I'm about to present you uh, how attackers can attack a uh, smart irrigation system. I will start by introducing smart irrigation system, then we'll talk about how we reverse engineered uh, smart irrigation systems, and I will present you some of the attacks that we did, spoofing attacks and replay attacks uh, against smart irrigation system, and in the end we'll discuss about the damage that can be done uh, using a botnet of smart irrigation system. That's it. Okay, so, Irrigation system, and especially smart irrigation system. So, um, about five years ago, the first smart irrigation system appeared. I'm not sure which one was the first smart irrigation system. Uh, however, uh, they first appeared five years ago. Um, today, you can find um, many vendors that uh, produce that uh, produce smart irrigation systems. Uh, they have many connected sensors, such as rain sensor and soil moisture sensor, for example. Um, they even have GSM editions, not only Wi-Fi editions. Um, and two years ago, Barcelona actually adopts uh, smart irrigation systems instead of its traditional uh, irrigation systems. Okay, so smart irrigation systems are actually uh, referred to advanced irrigation systems that incorporate various sensors and network components for increased efficiency in order to save water and money. Now, they are connected to the internet, they provide remote command and control service, they allow automatic adaptation of watering plan uh, based on weather forecast, and they monitor watering plans and water consumption. Okay, now let's talk about the motivation for buying smart irrigation systems. So first of all, they are very cheap. Uh, their price starts at uh, about $150. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon. Um, they consider as green technology. Uh, they design, as I said before, to uh, save money and also save water. Uh, they uh, provide very convenient user interface uh, comparing to the traditional uh, irrigation systems. It's a remote uh, user interface in which you can use uh, smartphones, um, uh, PCs, and even smart assistants to control them. And also they enable sensor connectivity, as I mentioned before. And they have wireless connectivity. They provide Wi-Fi ed uh, wi uh, editions and also GSM editions in which you can buy in order to uh, deploy in your garden, in your yard. This is the entire ecosystem and uh, the parties in which they are actually interfaced with. So on one, hand, on one end, you have uh, the smart irrigation system. It connected to your homeland. Uh, it also connects to sensors that are also connected to your uh, homelands. Uh, they um, connect it to your water line on the one end and to valves on the other end and the valves are actually connected to sprinklers, so they actually regulate water obtained from uh, water reservoir. Now using internet connectivity, they uh, uh, interface with CNC devices, uh, which uh, can be your smartphone application, uh, your laptop, your uh, smart assistant. They have uh, dedicated cloud servers in which they are used to, uh, I will mention it, uh, a uh, few slides from now, uh, they are used to uh, communicate with their user 
and that can be located anywhere around the world. And they actually also um, interface with weather forecast services. And this is uh, examples of uh, such. Uh, NOAA is one of them. The, no the METNO, which is the Nor Norwegian Meteorological Institute, is another one. OK, now, why we consider them as interesting? And why would attackers uh, will want to attack them? So first of all, they are connected to critical infrastructure. The Urban Water Service or the National Water Service considered as critical infrastructure uh, in most of the countries around the world. Um, another reason to attack them is maybe to cause a financial harm uh, to a party as a result of overconsumption of water. There are places around the world where water is very expensive and by overconsuming water, uh, you can actually uh, cause a financial harm. And these are examples of free smart irrigation system, commercial smart irrigation system that we investigated in this research. Uh, we bought the rain machine, the blue spray, and the green IQ smart irrigation systems. They are all uh, provide Wi-Fi connectivity, so you can uh, connect them to your home LAN using Wi-Fi to your router. Um, they are very cheap. These are um, their price, uh, including the shipment to Israel. They are even cheaper if you buy them if you buy them here in the U.S. Um, also, they are considered free of the best five, I think, or maybe ten uh, top smart irrigation systems, according to a few resources. So. We decided it will be good to use uh, cutting edge technology such as this. The entire set of methods that I will present in this research uh, conducted on uh, this uh, set of uh, smart irrigation systems. Now let's talk about how, do we, how we reverse engineered uh, smart irrigation systems. So we actually combined two techniques. Uh, the first technique was uh, extracting, the, extracting the firmware. Now, if you will see the green IQ, which is the one, uh, uh, which is uh, the, the picture with B, the, the white one. Uh, if you take a closer look, you will see Raspberry Pi. Uh, the, the guys from green IQ uh, did not design their own microcontroller. They actually use uh, Raspberry Pi as their uh, controller. And of course, the firmware was uh, uploaded to uh, uh, an SD card. So, well, so we actually took an SD card reader and uh, extracted the firmware for, uh, from there. Uh, we didn't ha even had to, uh, you know, uh, to think a lot and how to. Uh, they actually helped us in order to uh, get their firmware out of the their microcontroller, their product. Uh, regarding the rain machine, we actually downloaded the firmware using a UART connector um, use to a USB cable. And this is the way we extract, uh, this is the way that we used in order to extract the firmware of the rain machine. The rain machine is the one that you can see the, in uh, the A picture. Uh, the picture in the left, uh, in the, uh, on the top left. Um, and we also used uh, some network analysis. We connected them to a router and we captured their network traffic, uh, I would say for three weeks, something like this. Um, and when we analyzed their traffic, they're uh, using uh, you know, Wireshark, and we actually connected all three of them. So we, ha so we have um, two firmwares of the Rain Machine and the Green IQ, and the entire network behavior of all of them. Okay, the next uh, uh, set of attacks that I will present to you called spoofing attacks, uh, we actually uh, change the inputs that are going to the uh, smart irrigation system and observe what happened uh, because of our change. Um, we actually, the purpose of these attacks is to change the input of smart irrigation system in order to water according to attacker's wishes. And the execution of the attacks is by performing many in the middle attacks using session hijacking uh, from a bot running on a computer uh, on a compromised not uh, on a compromised device that is connected to uh, the same line of the smart irrigation systems. 
Okay, now the first attack that, we, that I'm going to present is actually uh, show how you can spoof smart irrigation system configuration. Um, a dedicated cloud server is used to provide CNC communication between a device, a CNC device, uh, a user from one end and the green IQ from to, uh, on the other hand. Um, bear in mind that the user can be anywhere around the world and uh, he need to communicate with his own uh, smart irrigation system that connected to his uh, homeland. And the, the dedicated uh, cloud server is actually mediates or used as proxy between the user and uh, the smart irrigation system. So a session between the green IQ and the cloud server is initiated every minute, is initiated every minute uh, in order to check whether the user sent any updates regarding watering plans and things like this. Um, one interesting thing is that the entire protocol, the entire interface between the smart irrigation system uh, and uh, the cloud server is actually based on HTTP protocol, which is pretty funny. Okay, now let's uh, discuss about uh, the vulnerability and introduce you their entire protocol and describe you later and show you, demonstrate you later how uh, uh, the Green IQ can be attacked. So uh, the session between the Green IQ and the DNA, and you know what, before the session, there is a, CSN, a CNC device which is operated by the user, uh, let's say from anywhere around the world, not, uh, not, it is not specifically has to be connected to its homeland, it can be operated via the internet. And the green IQ from the other end uh, is actually initiate a DNS request to a DNS server uh, to find uh, the green IQ .net address. The green IQ .net is actually its um, cloud server, and which is followed by a DNS resolve that is sent from the DNS server. Now, um, after the the green IQ uh, received the address of uh, its cloud server. It's actually initiated an HTTP request, which is called ping to cloud. Uh, the ping to cloud request is followed by uh, an HTTP response, which is sent from the cloud server and contains a timestamp. The timestamp is the timestamp of the last uh, time in which the user uh, have updated watering plan uh, from anywhere around the world. Um, and stages five and six are actually uh, are optional, and we'll discuss them in a few slides from now. Okay, now let's focus on stages three and four. An HTTP request uh, is being sent from the Green IQ to the cloud server. Uh, the Green IQ sends a ping every minute with its device ID. You can see it uh, uh, on the left uh, side. Uh, this is the device ID. This was extracted from the payload of the uh, of uh, the, uh, the packet that is being sent from the Green IQ to the cloud server, uh, which is then followed by the response. Uh, the server sends the timestamp of the last time the watering plan was updated by the user, and you can see the timestamp over here um, on the right side. Uh, it's basically a number which uh, describes the last time that. Uh, watering plan was updated. Okay, and it is all actually being sent on HTTP protocol. Now this was actually extracted from the firmware of the Green IQ. Um, take a look on the response, which is called new config, that is on stage number four, that is being returned to the Green IQ. Now, if the new config is actually greater, the timestamp of the new config, the last time that the user sent uh, uh, an update of watering plan is greater than the one that is stored in the memory of the green IQ. Uh, stages five and six are actually initiated and launched. Uh, a new HTTP request that is uh, called config XML request is being sent to, uh, to uh, the cloud server in order to obtain uh, the new uh, watering plan and the new configuration that was uh, updated by the user. Now, let's focus on stages five and six. An HTTP request is being sent from the green IQ to the cloud server, 
which followed by a response of an XML file. This is the XML file, by the way, on the right side. You can see that uh, it contains uh, details such as when to water, for how much time to water, and uh, yeah, other things that are important in order to, uh, um, to initiate the watering uh, in the time that the user uh, defined. And <clears throat> this is it. Okay, this is uh, a focus on the returned XML file, which is the HTTP response. As I said, it contained the entire configuration and went wa and went to water and the entire watering plans uh, that the user uh, set up. Now, as I said earlier, uh, this is all being done using HTTP uh, requests. So, uh, hijack the entire session is actually pretty easy. Uh, you can do, you can apply s some up school thing in order to uh, hijack the session, and you can um, use a fake a green AQ cloud server that will answer instead, that will respond instead of uh, the real. Uh, a green IQ cloud server, and when um, a request, an HTTP request with the last user update is being initiated, the server will uh, uh, answer, will respond with uh, the current timestamp, which is probably uh, bigger than the last time, greater than the last time that uh, is stored in the green IQ uh, memory, and it will then follow by another request to obtain the new uh, watering plan, which can be uh, followed by a response sent from the Green IQ uh, server to the Green IQ with fake, uh, uh, fake uh, watering plan as the attacker's wishes to. And this is, uh, and let me show you the demonstration of what will, what would happen if uh, you actually uh, do it. Now this is where you see the green IQ on the right hand, and this is the green IQ application. There is no watering plan scheduled at all, and we apply the attack that I just uh, presented, and look what happened to the, you can just initiate watering as you wish. Okay? Okay, let's continue. Okay, so you might ask yourself, what will happen if instead of returning the current time, the current timestamp, you will return a response of a timestamp that uh, is actually 10 years from now, and then send the fake uh, watering plan that, uh, let's say, uh, initiate watering all day long for the whole week. So actually, if you will see the firmware uh, code on the left side, uh, if you will send, uh, a response, and you can see it on the arrow in four, a response with, uh, let's say, future timestamp, it's actually uh, gonna cause the green IQ to ignore any legitimate, uh, um, any legitimate CNC command that is, will be initiated by the user. Now, combining this with, uh, let's say, watering all day long, well, actually, in order to stop watering all day long, uh, the user will not be able to use uh, his application in order to uh, stop watering. So what he actually will have to do is physically disconnect the green IQ from uh, the network in order to stop uh, such an attack. So it's actually a permanent denial of service of the green IQ that will require the, uh, the user to uh, physically disconnect the smart irrigation system in order to stop, uh, to stop it from watering his yard. Okay, the second spoofing attack that we, uh, that uh, uh, I'm about to present you is actually uh, 
uh, is actually spoof uh, is actually spoofing water uh, weather forecast. Now, a smart irrigation system automatically, uh, such as the one that uh, is presented in here, which is the rain machine, automatically adapts its watering plan according to the weather forecast obtained from weather forecast services. Uh, it was actually designed to save water, and you can think about rainy days. Uh, no water is actually no watering is actually needed. Uh, so, smart irrigation system knows and programmed to uh, prevent watering in, uh, let's say, uh, uh, rainy days. And they also uh, programmed to compensate for the lack of water in dry days. So, they actually, uh, every six hours, the weather forecast request is sent to the weather forecast server. And using the weather forecast that is being returned, um, the smart irrigation system adapts its watering plan automatically. Okay, so there are several um, weather forecast services that uh, provide HTTP protocol uh, to them and not HTTPS. Um, one of them was the Norwegian um, Meteorological Institute, which calls METNO. Uh, however, six months ago, something like this, they upgraded their um, um, they upgraded the protocol to HTTPS. However, you can find many other uh, weather forecast services that are still uh, using HTTP protocol instead of HTTPS and apply the attack that I'm about to show you. Um, so let's focus on the vulnerability. The, the rain machine actually uh, initiated the NIST request of weather forecast service that uh, is being configured in our memory, in its memory, uh, which is followed by DNS resolve sent from the DNS server. Um, afterwards, uh, a request for forecast, for weather forecast is being sent from, is being initiated by the rain machine. It includes latitude and longitude that were defined by the user, the latitude and the longitude of the specific uh, location of the smart irrigation system. And they are then followed by response, which is weekly weather forecast, and rain machine automatically adapts its watering plan according to the weather forecast in order uh, to save water and to compensate for the lack of water in order to uh, water your garden, your yard. And this is how it looks like. Um, a request is being sent from the rain machine to METNO, and, uh, which include the GPS coordination. Uh, of the location of the rain machine. And it's followed by an HTTP response, which, a weekly, which is a weekly weather forecast. And this is how it looks like. It actually contains temperature, wind direction, humidity, wind speed, and other things that are actually important to the smart irrigation system in order to adapt its watering plan. And this is actually uh, is being sent on, uh, let's say, on hourly resolution. So this is it. Now it's being, uh, by the way, initiated every six hours. There, there are four, uh, four requests, four HTTP requests such as this that are being initiated by the rain machine a day. Now we ask ourselves how we can exploit such uh, a protocol that is based on HTTP uh, protocol. And there are two ways in which we found, uh, we found a way to, uh, to spoof the input to the smart irrigation system. One of them is to uh, spoof the request location, which you can think about uh, instead of um, uh, sending the true location of the smart irrigation system, you will send uh, a location that appears as if it, if it is the most arid place on Earth. And this will actually result in a response of uh, weather forecast that uh, with the dry humidity, which will uh, require the smart irrigation system to adapt itself to water because of the lack of uh, rain that, uh, uh, that is being, uh, that, that it understands from the weather forecast uh, that is being sent. Another way is just to uh, spoof the response and you know, just changing the values of the weather forecast that is being sent. And let me show you how ah, I show you on the earlier. Um, one way is to change the GPS coordination, the request, and the other way is to change the values that are being uh, 
uh, received by the smart irrigation system. And I have a demonstration to show you. So this is my cat, by the way. OK, well, what you're about to see is that the uh, smart irrigation system is being configured to London uh, during winter. And you will see that no watering and no water is actually needed in order to uh, water your garden. Um, take a look on the weather forecast that is being received by the smart irrigation system. It starts from minus one up to six Celsius. And you see the zero percent. Zero percent are the amount of water that are required in order to water your garden. Since it's a rainy day, no water is actually uh, required. However, after applying our attack, uh, you will see uh, like uh, values that uh, don't make any sense in a minute. OK, this is uh, the smart irrigation system after we apply the attack. You can see values that range from 0 to 50. Um, the smart irrigation system understood that the, it's considered as very uh, dry uh, uh, weather forecast. So uh, it actually adapts its watering uh, plan. As you can see, 53% and 100%. Uh, so it, the attacker, when he will apply such an attack, he actually managed to cause the smart irrigation system to obtain water uh, when it actually does not need to obtain it. Okay, so this, uh, uh, these two uh, attacks were uh, spoofing attacks, and now I'm about to show you uh, two replay attacks. Um, also, uh, in this case, the purpose is to exploit a legitimate human machine interface uh, for CNC, uh, for command and control uh, communication, as a means of attacking the smart irrigation system in order to water according to the attacker's wish. And the execution is also being done uh, from a bot running on a compromised device that is connected to the same LAN of the smart irrigation system. And the first attack that we found, uh, the first vulnerability that we found is actually, uh, we found it in the bliss on uh, the blue spray. Blue spray is the one that uh, uh, is actually on the left, uh, the picture on the left. Uh, it provides HMI communication using a dedicated web interface that is based on HTTP uh, protocol, uh, and it provides its two devices that are connected to uh, its LAN. Now, it allows the user to schedule watering plans. However, no encryption or authentication are applied. So this is even easier than before. Um, this is, by the way, the JSON format of, the, of how a scheduling watering request is being uh, initiated. You can see the start date and how much time do you want uh, to, uh, to water and other things. So it's, it's actually very easy even to understand uh, how to attack it and how to schedule uh, unnecessary watering plan. And let me show you the demo of applying such an attack. OK, so what you're seeing in here, this is the original watering plan that uh, was configured. There are no watering plans at all. And we wrote a simple Python code that uh, actually initiates using HTTP request uh, watering. And this is uh, where the, we actually apply it.
Now let me show you the result of applying this code, of executing this code. This is the exact web interface in which I talked of. Now when you look on the watering plants that are actually all day long for the entire week, so this was only initiated using a simple HTTP request. Another interesting attack that we thought of, our, uh, and let me uh, present you the vulnerability, we actually extracted the code from the green AQ. As we mentioned earlier, they actually used um, a Raspberry Pi, so we extracted their, their firmware very easily. And we analyzed their code and found uh, the following uh, code lines. Uh, you can see the set GPIO function, uh, and it's actually, it's, it's, it's execution that operate, uh, the master valve actually opens the valve, so water will actually uh, flow uh, outside. And this is the, in line 428, you can see the execution of said GPIO and the specific uh, um, valve that is being, uh, the specific valve that is being uh, operated. And we actually ask ourselves how we can use it in order to uh, uh, initiate watering. Uh, so we are by assuming one of the following, either the SSH password is too weak or it is, has been leaked, or either the smart irrigation system itself is compromised, then you can uh, apply such an attack. You can uh, open a secure shell and a terminal and just uh, um, open the valve using the code that uh, I just present to you, the code that was in line 428. And this is the demo that shows you. Okay, take a look on the following video. You can see uh, the green IQ and how we are playing uh, with uh, opening the valve and closing the valve uh, every 10 seconds. This is where it stops for 10 seconds and afterwards it is being uh, again initiated. Now you can see the watering is actually starts again. Uh, and we actually use, uh, we applied it uh, using SSH communication. Um, that was applied from another compromised device that was connected to uh, the same uh, local area network of the Green AQ. Okay, so after uh, you know how to uh, actually initiate watering uh, as you wish, and in the times that you wish to water them, you can also imagine what would have happened. What would happen if an attacker has managed to use a botnet of smart irrigation system? Um, so, you know, botnets today are being. Uh, you, you can run them on the uh, the dark web. So they're pretty easy to, uh, they're fine in the wild, you can find them on the internet. Uh, you do not have to actually uh, infect smart irrigation system. You can rent a botnet and check uh, whether a smart irrigation system is connected to uh, the LAN of the compromised device where the bot is running. And you can think about what, uh, using a CNC model, uh, a botnet of smart irrigation system, and initiate watering from many smart irrigation systems simultaneously. And we ask ourselves what would have happened if uh, an attacker has managed to control a botnet of smart irrigation system using a CNC server. And we analyze the damage, and the typical sprinklers Water flow, this is actually the Falcon, uh, taken from the Falcon's specs, uh, is between 0 0.66 and 4.93 cubic meters per hour. So let's say on average it's 2.795 cubic meters on average per hour. 
Um, what is the damage uh, incurred when the attack is performed using a botnet of smart irrigation systems that are triggered to water simultaneously? Now, this is actually pretty interesting. You need a botnet of 1,300 uh, 1, uh, sprinklers in, uh, and you need to operate them for a single hour in order to uh, empty a typical water tower capacity, which is around 307, 787 uh, cubic meters. And if you're thinking about how uh, you can empty a flood water uh, reservoir, so this is where you need uh, a bigger botnet, uh, let's say about uh, 23 uh, thousands, and you need to operate them for six hours during night in order to uh, empty a flood water reservoir, which is uh, its capacity is around 404 uh, k uh, cubic meters. So it's actually, let's say, pretty dangerous attack if uh, the attacker can actually uh, harm. Uh, in an entire city and even a nation if you will manage to infect uh, many smart irrigation system. Um, and this is pretty interesting because um, this generation of IoT devices is actually being used by consumers to regulate um, resource such as water that are obtained from critical infrastructure. Now, traditional attacks against critical infrastructure require the attackers to somehow in fact, the critical infrastructure itself. Uh, they mostly use supply chain attacks. Um, they either use some, uh, let's say, insiders to infect their uh, system, to, to infect critical infrastructure systems. This kind of attack is actually an indirect attack. And it's much easier to deploy. And the reason that is, it is much easier to deploy is when you consider uh, critical infrastructure, they actually use IDS and IPS, intrusion detection systems, and prevention systems to prevent from attackers to attack their systems. However, as you can see, uh, this attack is actually indirect. It is much easier to attack the weakest uh, link uh, in the interface between the IoT device to the uh, critical infrastructure instead of attacking the critical infrastructure itself. Um, so. This was actually the entire idea behind uh, this attack, how you can manage to uh, attack uh, a critical infrastructure indirectly. Um, one last thing regarding ethics, we actually provided full ethical disclosure to uh, each one of uh, the uh, smart irrigation systems uh, manufacturers that uh, I showed you. Um, Green IQ actually thanked us and they decided to apply HTTPS communication, so I think that you uh, will not able to apply uh, our attacks and they are now uh, well aware to uh, their vulnerabilities. Um, they also decided to close SSH port uh, in their firmware uh, so they uh, actually prevent from attack, uh, from running Python code uh, to initiate watering. Rain Machine and Blue Spray engineers uh, contact us and we actually provide them uh, the entire necessary information in order to, um, to, uh, uh, to patch the firmwares. However, they did not tell us, told us uh, whether they uh, patched their vulnerabilities, so I'm not sure uh, whether you can apply our attacks or no, uh, I think that you, uh, from uh, my experience with uh, this kind of uh, uh, manufacturers, you probably, they did not patch their uh, uh, products yet. And they probably have some better things to do. Um, this is it, any questions? Okay, thank you very much.